Where do you think? Take a guess. Oh, so you know. We do know. Good. The idea of a derga, a group of believers who are leaving everything, their families, their wealth, their influence, their ties, and coming together for the sake of Allah to worship properly together and to make progress in the way of Allah, it is a sunnah of Rasulullah and such a thing in reality is the first time ever in history that it is put like that. Do you know why? Because all other religions, Ahlul Kitab, or taking from the different teachings of the prophets, they are all just concentrating on their own nationalities, concentrating on their own people, at the very least, concentrating on their own skin color or their own language. They don't admit people from outside. Exceptions maybe here and there, Book of Ruth. Uh, but majority, they said, no, we are the chosen one. No, we are the chosen one. And this is a Jahiliya kind of understanding that in this day and age, so many nations, they claim that they are the chosen ones. We say, uh, what are you chosen for? You haven't done anything for the past 1,000 years. What are you chosen for? Doesn't matter. We are chosen. As the Greeks, same. As the Bengalis, oh. oh. As the Albanians, oh. oh. Huh? As every nation now, they say, no, we are the chosen ones. So they go back to the Jahiliya understanding. But when the Holy Prophet, lays to salam, he brought the message of Islam. It is known. This is not exception too. It is known. The big ones, the king size Sahabis, so many of them, they are not only not from the tribe of the Prophet wasalam, they are from other nations. Hazrat Salman al-Farsi, he was Persian. Hmm? Hazrat Suhaib al-Rumi, he was from Rum. Hazrat Bilal, he was Abyssinian. And these are the pillars of Islam, pillars of the community of the Sahabis, you understand? And they come together because they, this was also something that really hurt the Quraysh at that time. Because they say he's coming and he's breaking every rule, he's breaking every tie. Because all they believed in are the Arabs, like, like it is now. They have nothing, nothing, but they say the thing that we love the most, that we cannot break, is our lineage. Correct? They have nothing, maybe, but they can sit and they can sing the poetry about their lineage for hours. And this is something that the Holy Prophet said to us, he doesn't like too much. Correct? You are up like this or like that, you know. Yeah. So now, all these ones, and the Prophet is saying, there is no difference between Arab and Ajam, except for taqwa. Hmm. The one Sahabi that was just joking with Hazrat Bilal, and he said, Oh, you son of a black woman. It is very mild. And they were just joking. At that time, it was very mild. They used to say so many things at that time. Right now, that is very mild. Right now, modern people will call each other different uh, color, different kinds of curses. And they say there's nothing wrong with that because my culture called them that. Uh, but Hazrat Bilal, when he heard it, his heart broke. And when he came to the presence of the Holy Prophet wasalam, Prophet wasalam, knew immediately something was wrong. And he says, Ya Bilal, what happened? He was making it public. He could have made it private, but he made it public so that everyone will learn. As Bilal saying, it is known to you, Ya Rasulullah. This is what happened. 
Prophet ﷺ, he got so upset, his face is white. That he says, call that other Sahabi. The other Sahabi came, Prophet ﷺ was very upset, and the Sahabi knew immediately what he did. He lay down, Prophet was turning his face, he didn't even look at him. He lay down on the floor and he says, Ya Bilal, step on my face. Bilal started crying, he started crying. He says, no, I forgive you. He says, no, I'm not accepting it, he's saying. Step on my face. Both of them, all of the other Sahabis, they heard that and they started crying. And Hazrat Bilal then pleaded to the Holy Prophet, alayhi The Prophet says, I'm not interfering. So Hazrat Bilal now, he is caught. So he says, the only way to stop everyone, their hearts from breaking. So he went there and he just touched the sole of his feet, the bottom of his feet, on that other Sahabi's face, and he put it away. And he got up, they hugged. And everyone was crying, they understood. So it is a very delicate situation this, that the Arabs they were taking for granted. So the Prophet wasalam, he came to cut all of that. They're saying this, this one comes from a good family, he's cutting off from his family. In the old days, to cut off from your family means you have no way. Because you cut off from your family, you can go to other people, but your family is going to tell other people, this one, we kick him out, no one is going to accept you. It's not that easy, like today, everyone is cut off from everything. You think that you can be doing anything that you want. In those days, you cannot even move if you don't have the support of a patron, someone who is giving you the support. That's why Hazrat Abu Talib, Abu Talib, Abu Talib was very important. The importance of Hazrat Hamza was very important to the Holy Prophet. So, now, he's cutting off the relations with your family, with the tribe, between a master and a servant, he says, there's no difference. Between a slave and a master, no difference, he's saying. Between black and white, no difference. He's not teaching religion, he's teaching spirituality. Because the religion is only on the outside. It's only on the outside and it's talking about, usually, people who are your people, even today. If you think about Christianity, everyone thinks it's a white man's religion. It is not religion coming from a prophet of the Ben Israel. Correct? Although that teaching now reached all the way to India, the apostle Thomas, he went all the way to India. Nobody thinks of Christianity as an Indian religion. Although there were apostles who went into Byzantium, and the Greeks took them, that religion. Nobody thinks of Christianity as a Greek religion, really. But Islam, nobody can say that it is an Arabic religion. Mm. So, Vedarga, taking people, people who want to understand their reality, taking a guide, slowly fixing themselves and fixing the uh, things that is under their responsibility. We don't do anything in tariqat if it's not a sunnah. Understand? If you think a little bit, try to draw conclusions, that when you start thinking, that's when your heart is going to open. Fatiha. Ali. Salam